What we have here on the table at uh, Smart Factory Expo is quite possibly an engine that's going to change all of our worlds. And it was uh, created, invented, developed, uh, and is being made by John Fenton of FETU. Welcome, John. Welcome. Thank you very much, Link. Um, tell us what this is. In, it, in its simplest form, it's, it's a volumetric to rotational conversion platform or a heat engine in, in its very simplistic form. Uh, 200 years ago, Sardo Carne, the, the godfather of thermodynamics, described an, an ideal engine um, in version of a, a closed loop which was thermodynamically reversible. Uniquely, our device is two devices in one. It, it's basically a mirrored principle whereby with two chambers operating on one half of the device, two chambers operating on the other half of the device. So uniquely we can operate both sides as a compressor, both sides as an expander, or we can compress and expand within the single unit. So effectively this is an engine that can operate as a driver of and deliverer of power, or it can be powered to deliver a compression service or anything you like. Absolutely. Per perfectly put, yes. You, you can put rotational energy in and do volumetric work, as in a pump or a compressor, in, in a very simplistic and, and efficient way. Or c conversely, harness volumetric efficiency and I can, to a turbine and convert that into rotational work for the production of electricity or propulsion. That's the mechanical side of it, but this has a very strong uh, reflection of what you feel about the way that energy should be saved, uh, consumed more efficiently for the benefits of the planet. We're, we're in desperate need for, for green energy innovation and quite by accident it, it, it was a, a childhood challenge from a, a very dear, dear friend of mine that led me to create the device as originally internal combustion engine. And it, it's only so he really actually said to you, you need to go and invent a different kind of internal combustion <laughs> engine? To a 13-year-old boy, basically telling me that, you know, he said, at the time, he said, they're 20% efficient. You know, you've, you've 80% to play with, as though it was such an easy thing So the 80% of the energy, you were, of, of the fuel you were putting into any en engine, you were wasting 80% of it? Absolutely. Despite the, the fuel's efficiency, at a, a point of, of consumption is 100%, near 100%. Our inability to convert that into work results in 80% of that being lost. I, I think today... Um it's now you know seventy percent waste as opposed to eighty. Then we've got we've made some strides. Yes, I'm going to ask you what the energy efficiency of this is compared with the internal combustion engine. Our, if if we took it in relation to it's it's about energy efficiency, as you say. It, the, one of the unique things that you can't do with a, an internal combustion engine is run it within a closed circuit. So what we can do is we can run this within a closed circuit. At this minute in time, state of the art in recovering low grade waste heat is 10% from a gas to gas transfer. Looking at the baseline maths from our device, an absolute worst case is 30%. That's a factor of three times better. Low grade waste heat is, is such an abundant source of, of free energy, it's classed as green uh, because it's, it's, you're regenerating a waste product. So that's really, it's with 18 potentials for, for it. The internal combustion engine is number 18. We're not entirely convinced we'll ever build an internal combustion engine from it, but all that we'll need to. The, the, the secret, we think, is in this closed-loop variant and, and a very kind, low emission, low overhead in terms of the environment. It's, it's completely recyclable. We're, not using, we're using a natural refrigerant gas in, in CO2. So it, it's, it's such an inert device. The, the, the University of Bath, I understand, have been running some bench tests on it and the results have been most encouraging. For the last year, um, they've basically run, uh, run a, the compressor version of, of, uh, of the unit and we've had some astounding tests. At, at the beginning, um, Professor Jamie Turner, Dr Colin Copeland, I said to them, it's a compressor, where do we need to be compressor, compression wise? So they said, well, 
if you can get to two to one compression ratio, you're as good as a, a supercharger, an eating compressor, which is commonplace to automotive. They said if you can get to three to one, you're as, as good as a turbocharger, which again is, is a very well established oil free. I, I stress that we've, we've run the test oil free compressor. So um, in this first test, the first prototype achieved four, four and a half to one pressure ratio. So at the four, four and a half to one, that's pretty good. In, in comparison, the, the re-engineered version that we did partway through the study, the final result, it produced 7.2 to 1. But that in itself is, is such, such a step change, but the, the other resoundingly good factor is that we're doing that at fundamentally lower speeds. So a turbocharger is doing 3 to 1 pressure ratio at 100,000 RPM, at 130,000 RPM. A supercharger uh, is doing 2 to 1 ratio at 25,000 RPM. We're doing 7.2 to 1 at 1,000 RPM. So the, the fundamental difference of that is that that is four-pole motor speed. So we, we can run this at 1,500 RPM attached to a four-pole generator, and we can produce three-phase electricity at 50 hertz. So no inversion, that can just go straight back into your... your you know, process. So it's not only being more efficient in terms of the compression ratios, it is also taking much less energy to create that greater efficiency. Um, absolutely. So it's a, it's a double win. I, I'm, I'm not an engineer. Um, I'm a journalist. I just say to myself, this has to be a game changer. And is that, is, is that an exaggeration or is this a game changer? We, we perceive it to absolutely to be a game changer but it's a physical entity. It, it has to be based on physical proof. We've developed it to TRL5 in just over, over a year. We, we've had some fantastic uh, uh, appreciation in, in relation to the development in, within that time. Uh, somewhat unexpected. So what we need now is we're looking to take it to TRL7. So TRL7 is considered a point of, of absolute proof. So we've, we've shown it does well, you know, we, we've demonstrated it, it, it's demonstrated our belief in terms of what we're offering. What we need to do now is, is take that to a point of, of absolute proof. Yeah, I so. wish you all the very best of luck, John. Bless you. Thank Cheers. you very much, sir. Appreciate it.